right in the midline. And this is a thing called pineal calcification, in which Europeans usually have a calcified pineal, usually in about 60 to 80 percent of their adult population. Africans, 5 to 15 percent. What is pineal calcification? It's where the pineal gets so much calcium inside of it that it shows up as, an, as a spot on an x-ray, from a regular x-ray, also on a CAT scan. All pineals have some degree of calcium content. But when you get heavy pineal calcification, you then have, you then have a reduction in the amount of the pineal hormone that's being released. It drops to one half. So here at Plain, brothers and sisters, African people have twice as much pineal hormone in their blood as Europeans. Straight up fact. Now, can I give you the test? One, true or false? Do African people have, more, have large amounts of pineal hormone melatonin in their blood? True or false? True. Let us move on. Fundamental. And why do you say that? Because we have a lower amount of pineal calcification. We only have one sixth of our population calcified, whereas you have usually 80% or 60 to 80% of your population calcified. They will then count and say, well, calcification does not mean that it doesn't, it doesn't stop producing any melatonin. I didn't say it stopped producing all melatonin. I said it was a reduction. It dropped between from 70 nanograms in an uncalcified pineal to only 35 nanograms, average serum level, and it person has a calcified pineal. If you're a Nigerian, your records are 5%. If you're a black person in Cincinnati, 10%. Black person in Watts, California, 15%. Indian, 25%. In East India, Japanese, 10%. If you are a white person in San Francisco, 65, 55, 60%. If you are a white person in Stockholm, Sweden, 80%. Cold, straight up numbers. You got a black thing going on, your eyes open. So no wonder they call you soul people. No wonder you feel these vibes and can't find words to, make, to put it in all the time. There it is. Calcified pineal. That's what it looks like. There was one study that was done in an attempt to cover this whole critical fact up, in which they had did a study of pineal calcification in people in Uganda during a time when there was huge amounts of death taking place. And they would take an x-ray of the person, then you'd see the pineal that had been cut out of their brain after they were dead. I said, oh no, I can't trust these numbers here. No, 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 this is game here. So I had to disregard that publication. Now, you don't have to, tr if you don't trust a black authority, but that's not, that's, this is for the people who be watching these videotapes. Because I can tell by my audience here that you, who have become these black media lectures, you guys, this people, you've been raised up. <laughs> well, over a period of many years. So you don't even deal on this plane. Because you trust what a black man says. <laughs> you've, been, you've been woke up a long time ago. Now for those of you in media land, <laughs> if you don't trust this lovely black audience who sit before me tonight, if you don't trust me, a black man, I don't care. <laughs> I care what you folks here think. <laughs> But perhaps you'll listen to your own, Sigmund Freud. Would you please buy a copy of Moses and Monotheism by Sigmund Freud? Moses and Monotheism was the last book published by Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, the rediscovery of psychiatry for the European world. A Jewish physician, mind you. Oh, an Askashic Jew. A Khosar Jew. Yes, you should read also The Thirteenth Tribe uh, by Arthur Kessler. Yes, you should. And you also would want to read the book The Columbus Conspiracy by Michael Bradley. Yes, that's helpful. Oh, and don't forget Dr. Ben's book, Black... Uh, black Jews. Oh, don't leave that one out. And don't forget Rudolph Windsor called the book on Babylon. You don't want to, Babylon 10 books, you don't want to leave those out. No way, please. And don't leave out this wonderful book on Hebrewisms in West Africa, written in 1930. Then you won't leave that one out either. But coming back to the main point, here on the desk of Sigmund Freud, year 1936 in Vienna, is his desktop. If you read this book, Most of Mouthism, Sigmund Freud says that he studied more psychology than he did, psych more history than he did psychology. He had been studying Egyptian comedic history before he ever became famous. He studied about hypnotism by the Egyptians. He studied from Charcot and others and Mesmer. And that's why he got turned on, on to psychology. But also he knew that, psych that hypnotism had been practiced in ancient Kemet. He studied about the underworld or the so-called unconscious that was talked about in Osiris. Each morning, now get this, the first thing that Sigmund Freud did when he entered his office in the morning was to do what? Was to walk up and to touch the head of Jehudi, a statue of Jehudi as a baboon, touching wisdom hoping that he would be blessed. He was a firm, and bottom line, he was a firm student of African psychology and medicine. Did you know that? True or false? Was Sigmund Freud a student of African medicine? True, he was. How do you know that? The last book he wrote before he died, Moses and Monotheism. He wrote it 20 years before he published it. Why? White supremacy. <laughs> Clear cut. He knew what he was dealing with in Vienna, Europe, and America. There on his desk is his manuscript of Moses and Monotheism. Can you make out some of those statues? 
Oh my goodness, look on the left hand side. There's Wasir in the background. Ah, Hathor. Amin Ra. Oh, there's Bost. Right there on the man's desk now. Now, this was a couch in which Sigma Freud analyzed his patients. You see that picture above his couch? If you went, can you imagine this? Oh, I can't talk to a black psychiatrist. You aren't as good as a white psychiatrist. None of them aren't as good as a Jewish psychiatrist. And then you go into the so-called top Jewish psychiatrist's office, and you look up on this wall over the couch that you're being analyzed on, and you see a print of this. <laughs> Bam! That's right, buddy. <laughs> Abu Simbel, Ramses II, who was said to have been the person who chased them out during the Exodus. Ain't a bit of truth to that. So you'd want to read, in particular, Hebrewisms of West Africa, and you'd also want to read some, some comments by Charles Finch in his message from the Dark Land. He has some nice comments about the time of the so-called Exodus of those people who were in concert with the Hiskos. Here these, now, do we have to even raise a question as to whose people this man belongs to? Uh-uh. Not even a question. Clearly an African man. Oh, and there on the other side is the Sphinx. He was a student of African medicine and African history. Yes, he was. So Sigmund Freud says that Moses was an Egyptian. Moses was a black man, clearly. Now, this, my brother, is a sweet piece. Without question. Here we have a black cube, a black square, if you will with a child emerging from that cube. And behind it is his teacher. Melanin, the core atom in melanin is carbon. C-A-R-B-O-N. Carbon is the black stuff on the end of that burnt wood named Kim. Carbon is the atom formed in the core of a star, the main sequence of stars. Carbon is the atom of life. Carbon forms a cube. It forms a square. It can bind in four different directions and form a six-sided cube. So my brothers and sisters, this is the bottom line. This is the bottom line on Kim right here. It shows life emerging with his invisible teacher in the back of his head. What does that suggest? Who oh, has it meant? It's showing that you are not alone that you have a holy guardian angel with you each second of every minute of your life. You can all, and that's your super genius connection. When you walk through that black doorway, you say, you call, you call him what? You call him God. Through your black door. And the, all of the angels and archangels in between. Can you see why somebody doesn't want you even to study yourself? I hope they don't call home. It wasn't E.T. calling home now. <laughs> it was mom and daddy calling home. Is it wake up time yet? Yes, it's wake up time. 